Well, g'day everyone, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing a lens which is very close to my heart. It's the Canon 400 5.6. This old but good lens uh, was what started it all for me. Uh, this is the first birding lens I ever got, and coupled with a 7D I had at the time, I just used this non-stop for a few years and took hundreds of thousands of photos of birds, you know, sort of learnt my craft and probably took some of my most favourite images. So what I'm going to do today is showcase some of the images I've already taken with this lens and show you what it's capable of. And I'm also going to go out in the field and have a couple of sessions, take you along with me using this uh, lens on, a, say, an old crop body like this one, the 40D and my 5D Mark IV. If you haven't seen it, I did actually shoot a challenge video um, a month or so back. I'll put a link to it above where I use this lens and this camera so you can see more evidence of it in action there. I'm also going to quickly talk about how this lens uh, compares to other lenses that you can actually get in this sort of price bracket. We're talking this sort of sub 2000 US dollar mark. I'd love to know in the comments below what lens you currently shoot with and if you've got any questions let me know. At the end of the video, I'll go through the pros and cons. Hopefully you enjoy today's video. It's, uh, I'm not gonna get too technical. Hopefully you'll just enjoy all these photos that I'm about to show you. So um, make a cuppa maybe, um, and we'll get into it. I've got my little Surface Pro here so I can read uh, the spreadsheet. I'll chuck it up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got the lenses which are less than 2000 US. There's a few that aren't on there. There's ultimately better lenses than those uh, older lenses, so that's why they're not on here. I'll just quickly talk about 405.6, which is at the top. Um, great price, 1150 US, still expensive, even more expensive in Australia, it's 1750. But compared to the others for a birding lens, it's getting pretty good value. Uh, the weight is probably its big advantage at uh, 1250 grams. Extremely light with a body on it, it's probably less than two kilos or around two kilos. Really hand holdable, uh, you can walk around, no problem with it whatsoever and uh, you really notice it going from a heavy lens to just how much of a luxury it is to have such a light lens. And if you're out in the bush or doing any walking or tr anything like that, you've got to take the weight in consideration. So really light, uh, 400 5.6, 400 mil focal length, probably a little bit short on full frame bodies. It's ideal with say the 90D or 80D or any of the Canon 24 megapixel crop sensors. Of course the full frame, you can crop it, but for whatever reason, it just feels better when you're on a crop body and, and the birds look bigger in the frame when you're photographing them. Um, and compared to the others that are available, 400 is probably getting a little bit short. You can put a 1.4 extender on it, takes it out to, what's that, 560 f8, and it does focus at f8. It's a little bit slow, the autofocus, the IQ is not quite as good, but you do have that option there if you just want a little bit more length. And I have used it, and I'll show you a couple of photos at um, using that focal length. You just could be aware of that, no IS, so you need like, those higher shutter speeds. I haven't had, I didn't really find it much of an issue to be honest, I'm always using higher shutter speeds anyway. Took plenty of photos at um, say 200th of a second, 250th, and I'll show you a photo at that shutter speed. The other, the, probably the thing you'll see there in red is the minimum focus distance, probably a real big issue with this lens. What that means at three and a half meters, if anything comes within that three and a half meters, your camera won't focus. So if a bird's walking towards you and it comes within that range, you can't focus and it's, it's annoying. It doesn't happen all that time, but kind of wish it was, it was shorter. You know, the, the late, what's that? The new Canon goes down to what, one meter. So it's amazing and uh, it allows you to take almost macro type stuff too. If you know, if you're flowers or butterflies and that sort of thing. So that minimum focus distance is a bit of a downer. And the length of it, it does um, actually extend quite long when you, take the lens hood. It is a bonus, the lens hood's attached, you can't lose it, uh, but it does make it quite long. Um, not an issue for balance or anything like that, and I don't find it an issue, but uh, you do have a bit of length there, but you know, it comes down, so it is a pretty cool nifty feature, that lens hood. Uh, compared to those other lenses, it's when I purchased this, the uh, a lot of these weren't available, so um, and today's mark's got much harder competition today than it did back when I bought it. The new Canon 100 to 400, brilliant lens. I haven't actually used it. I've seen it used. A friend of mine's got one. Uh, it's according to, at 400, it's just as sharp. You've got the zoom, the minimum focus distance. It's a no-brainer if you can afford it. But it is almost another thousand dollars on top of this. So you know, some people on a budget might not be willing to spend two grand plus on a lens. So. Um, that's that option. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a D500 or Nikon, you've got that amazing two, 200 to 500, really affordable telephoto lens that Nikon have produced. 
fantastic option if you're shooting Nikon and Sony obviously have that new 200 to 600 that they've come out with um, haven't used it but by all accounts great lens but it is getting pricey at 2000 that's getting to the top bracket sort of thing plenty of other options for uh, the other mounts with uh, Sigma and Tamron plenty of offerings uh, as I mentioned uh, zooms have that benefit but majority of the time if you're birding you're generally always at that top focal length anyway the, the longest you can go so most people will use it at 600 or 500 or whatever it is so you know it is nice to have it but it's you want to know how it performs at the longest focal length and traditionally a lot of those zooms were a little bit soft wide open so at 6.3 you had to go out to f8 which used to cause some issues with shutter speeds and iso not so much now but those were always the the issues and the autofocus wasn't quite as fast but i can't really comment because i haven't used the latest lenses i'd love to get a colder one and use it and try it out and see for myself but i can't really compare because i haven't used them but they are heavier and uh, weight does come into it and often you know a little bit bigger as well just to put in your bag or anything like that yeah something that's not on here which is really really important is how sharp it is we don't have a column for sharpness plenty of charts you can check out but from my real world experience this is super sharp and that's why i purchased it in the first place i wanted a sharp lens sharp wide open sharp all the way through um, you know and that makes a massive difference sometimes with birding so uh, sharpness is key and that's what this lens excels at let's have a look at some of the photos that i've taken with this lens over the years um, as i've mentioned i bought it in 2012 used it till 2014 mid 14 when i got my 500 but i took uh, plenty of photos in that time i'll bring up a couple the first image on the screen is the uh, little fairy wren magnificent little bird love this shot looks like it's surfing up that um, that stick that that was taken on the 7d um, 250th of a second uh, which is pretty slow shutter speed but it's sharp love it really really cool what's next uh, this beautiful rainbow bee eater taken up in Queensland love the light love the pose uh, nice and sharp um, a great photo a spotted partilote really cool little bird real colorful love those spots uh, on just a little perch uh, the bird looks great, nice and sharp, background's out of focus at 7.1, um, yep, looks good. Uh, this Eastern Curlew, love this shot, um, took it back in, what, 2013, and uh, these are notoriously difficult birds to get close to. Uh, it was beautiful morning light, and uh, I crawled, a friend of mine and I were crawling down a bank, so we were hidden, uh, a sandbank, we crawled down, and the birds didn't know we were there. We managed to get some shots, and the birds looked up, wondered what was going on and I think it slowly walked off but we managed to get some shots love that so very happy with that 7d 400 5.6 oh yep this is a nice portrait of a little double banded plover um, quite small birds but I managed to get quite close I crawled along the sand to get up to this one but plenty of detail as you can see um, yeah there's no issue with sharpness there is there so um, fantastic oh yep this is a short-tailed shearwater migration shot uh, so I was on a boat, that's something else I didn't mention. I use this all the time on, bo on a boat photographing seabirds. Great pelagic lens, great flight lens when you're photographing birds flying. Uh, how, yeah, so we've got those nice rocks in the back and all these thousands of birds were migrating. It was an amazing experience, but you know, the lens did really well um, to capture the, uh, what was happening in that shot. Uh, this one is a black-browed albatross. Almost looks like, uh, you can see how planes got their designs copied it from birds it's got its landing gear its feet down you know its tails up to slow it down and it's coming to land so I was on the back of a moving boat uh, photographing that so that was a, a good shot um, yep so we've got this uh, beautiful um, royal albatross southern royal albatross uh, stunning birds I, I was very fortunate to go to the sub Antarctic um, many years ago and got to photograph these amazing birds on their breeding grounds and the 400 performed really well in that sort of low wet environment uh, did really really well so I love that photo just the look that it gives you and sort of a little bit of habitat in the background so that's a great portrait oh yeah these are this is a little turn I laid there for hours with a few mates uh, waiting for the adults to come and feed the chicks and just managed to capture that action uh, focused on the chick I think yeah I did and just held that shutter down as the adults landed and captured that sort of in action that flight shot um, with the 5D Mark III. This is a flight shot of a bar-breasted honey eater taken up in the Northern Territory, handheld. So I've managed to just get the bird flying and uh, took some photos and 
they came up sharp, so that was fantastic. So I was stoked with that. Uh, this rainbow lorikeet, one of the most colorful birds in Australia and also one of the most common. So if you ever visit Australia, on the east coast at least, you'll be guaranteed to see this uh, bird. Uh, quite noisy, but very colorful. It's actually uh, ISO, what's that, 3200, 200th of a second. So, you know, pretty tough conditions, but it's come up really well. This uh, cliff face was taken with the 405.6 off the back of a boat. So, you know, maybe if you do take landscape shots and sometimes a telephoto lens works well and being as sharp as it is, it can take landscape shots as well. So we'll go into the field now and uh, use the lens and take some photos, show you those photos and then I'll come, I'll come back at the end with my, my conclusion and thoughts. So, all right, enjoy. to have a battery. So I've currently got the 405.6 uh, with no extender with the 5D Mark IV, so we're at 400 millimeters focal length. I'm going to be photographing some robins on this rock uh, in front of me. So they're fairly tame and they come for mealworms, so I'll put mealworms on the rock. I'll take some shots. This is obviously a, a, a best case scenario, so you know, uh, the birds are, are tame and uh, I've got a nice background and a nice uh, perch for them to stand on. So it's all set up, but this is a good way to test the lens just to show you how sharp it is. Um, so we'll do that. Okay. And the bird should turn up any second now. So I've gone to f8, but I've had to reduce that shutter speed down to 250, uh, which is pretty low. Uh, no IS on this lens, so it'll be interesting to see if I can get sharp photos at 250th of a second. So he's got a nice pose at the moment. Throw the extender on. So with that 1.4 extender on, we now go up to f8 as our uh, lowest aperture number. Um, so we'll take a few shots at f8 and we'll see what it looks like. At f8, you don't have as much light coming in, so you'd often have to up your ISO or down your shutter speed. But with these newer cameras, they handle the ISO so well, it's not really an issue anymore. I guess with the 1.4 extender on, it's noticeably slower. Um, the autofocus, uh, it's actually, um, it does struggle a little bit. I think that's actually the hooded robin uh, female on the rock, very similar to a snappy winter. Beautiful morning though, the sun coming up, there's not a lot of wind. Ok, 
currently on 40D, 7.1 photograph of the Court of Welburn. I've dropped the I've dropped it down to ISO 400 because we've got plenty of light. Um, so it performed really, really well, uh, you know, it's fast to focus and uh, I'm sure these shots will be sharp. So you will be able to check them on the computer to see just how good they turned out. Overall, a fantastic little lens. Um, I might take a few uh, handhelds and we'll see how that performs. I'll put the 5D back on. So we're handheld at 400 mil. A little red cat robin female on the rock. Well, that was a really fun experience. I really enjoyed um, using the 405.6. Brought back a lot of memories. You know, the actual weight of it. It's, you soon forget just how, how nice it is to have such a light lens. Uh, it performed as I expected, uh, super sharp. And as you saw by those images, um, the quality is just fantastic. Especially that hooded robin. Uh, I'll show you on the screen. Like this is 100% crop. And that's the sort of detail that we're getting at 100%. So, you know, obviously the camera has a bit to do with that, but the lens also plays its part. And there's no doubt that this lens is as sharp as they come. Just the ruggedness of it, it's an extremely well-made lens. You never feel like it's gonna break. Um, it's never let me down in the number of years that I've used it. So the actual build quality is extremely high. 
And obviously the price plays a part as well. As I've mentioned earlier, it's an affordable birding lens. You know, if, you, if you're gonna make an investment into birding and you don't wanna to spend too much money, the lens is where you wanna spend the money. So that's sort of why I went with this lens as a starting lens. I don't wanna to spend too much, but I wanted a sharp lens. I didn't wanna buy something and then regret that decision later on. And obviously this lens has <laughs> definitely not let me down. So in that regard, it's great. So if you were to remake this lens, that's probably another way to look at it, what would I do differently? Well, I'd make the minimum focus distance a meter like the new Canon 100 to 400. I'd add IS, uh, the latest IS, and I would probably make it at 500, 5.6 similar to that um, Nikon that's come out. That would be ideal, but as it is, it still works really well. Would I recommend it in today's market? Um, it's a little bit of a harder sell. If you want a, a light, affordable lens that'll never let you down, then go ahead, this is a fantastic one. You, you won't regret buying this lens, I can guarantee you that. But in the age where we've got so much options and the zooms and the extra reach, you know, perhaps those are a better option if that's what you're after. I can't make the decision for you. All I've done today is taken lots of photos with this lens, showing you some previous photos, and uh, the decision is yours. Hopefully it's helped. Um, just quickly before we wrap it up, um, I'd just like to plug my website. Um, so all the photos that I've shown in today's video, and there's quite a few of them, are actually on my website, and you can go and check those out. So um, at photos.dwadepayton.com. I'll put a link in the description below, but all the photos there and all the photos I've ever taken of all the different birds, hundreds of birds are on my website as well, which are free to check out. I've also included the uh, chart that I sh showed in the video if you're interested in having a look. Uh, there may be some mistakes in there, but that was just quickly, I put it together and the colors just mean that the, the dark green is the best in class and the dark red is the worst in class. So it might help you have a quick look and, and compare a few lenses. Yeah, if you, if you like this sort of content, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. There's a little fairy ring in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. So if you click on that, you can subscribe. To those that have already subscribed, I've been a little bit um, humbled by how many people subscribe in the last week or two. I think the last video I mentioned I was over 100. Well, I'm over 200 now. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed. People that are leaving comments, it's really, really encouraging. I'm, I'm, we'll answer every comment that is placed. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave those below and give it a thumbs up as well if you like it. And if you like these gear reviews, maybe just um, you know let me know and I'll continue doing them. So um, until the next video, really, really appreciate it. Take care and see you later.